Last season, they did not win the SEC nor the SEC West. Heck, they even lost to their arch rivals by double digits. So what? Who cares? Because Alabama, well, they let their body of work do the talking, and maybe, in a way, the name Alabama itself was enough for the college football committee to give the Tide one of the four college football playoff spots. And once Alabama was able to get healthy, which was around CFP time, the Tide did not waste their opportunity. In the semifinal, getting revenge on Clemson, and in the national championship game against Georgia, trolling the Bulldogs at halftime, Nick Saban made a very gutsy, but what turned out to be a move that paid off big dividends by benching Jalen Hurts and going with the quarterback that hardly played last season in Tua Tagovailoa, and the rest is history. Tagovailoa showed his strong and accurate arm, led the Crimson Tide back, and in overtime with the Bulldogs leading by three and Bama facing second and 26, it was Tagovailoa with the dart that he threw to Devonta Smith, who did the rest. Bama scored the game-winning touchdown, beat Georgia, and won the school's 12th national championship in the AP slash coaches era. For Nick Saban, yeah, his sixth national title, tying him with the great Paul Bear Bryant. And if you're looking for Bama to slow down anytime soon, yeah, keep dreaming. That's that's most likely not going to happen. And by the way, Saban just signed a new contract deal, eight years Close to $75 million. Yeah, he's going to be there to at least the year 2025. He continues to get the top recruits in the country. Alabama, yes, they are the standard by which everybody else in college football is measured by, but that's been the case. And even though they lost a lot of players to the NFL, I would be shocked if Bama were not the preseason number one once those polls are released here pretty soon. I'm broadcasting the show on July 31st, so those polls have not been quite released during this time. It's an Alabama offense that rocked in 2017. 37 points per game. They do lose talent, and that's nothing new, though. They also, too, lose a coordinator. That's nothing new, either. As Brian Dable, now the offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills, you elevate Mike Loxley to the OC position. And big decision for him, as well as for Nick Saban, who's going to be the starting quarterback? You can go Jalen Hurts, of course, a veteran, 26 wins, two losses there. Uh, last year, through 17 touchdowns, only one interception. Plus, he ran for about 900 yards. Or you can go with the quarterback who's got the stronger arm, probably the more accurate quarterback, and, of course, the hero of last year's national championship game, Tua Tagovailoa. 11 touchdowns, only two picks. That's right, the Alabama quarterback duo combined for only three interceptions. Talk about a major area where the Tide look immortal, that is the area of interceptions. They hardly throw one. Tucker Viola also completed 66% of his passes. Did have a hand injury during the spring, but he should be ready to go. Since I'm not Nick Saban, and since I don't live in Tuscaloosa or anywhere in Alabama, I'm not going to say who's going to get the starting nod. If you want the stronger arm, it's Tucker Viola. If you want a guy that has proven to be a multidimensional threat, it's Jalen Hurts. Running game does lose Bo Scarborough, but don't think that the tied running attack will be lifeless. Far from it. Damian Harris, exactly 1,000 yards rushing a year ago and 11 TDs over 7 yards per carry. He'll be showcased quite a bit, as will Najee Harris. Of course, a five-star recruit last year got his feet wet late in the year, and you have Brian Robinson at 6.9 yards per carry. The receivers, well, they lose all everything. And Calvin Ridley, he accounted for so much of their receiving yardage and completions. Cam Sims, Robert Foster, all gone. The Tide, though, are still going to be stacked as far as the wideouts. Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs both averaged about 20 yards per catch. They're back. And so is Devonta Smith, 20 yards per catch as well. The hero last year, of course, alongside uh, Tugga Biola in the national championship game. To a through the game-winning pass, it was Harris who caught it. So big threat. You have him back, too. Offensive line, most of the experience is back. You do have to replace Bradley Bozeman, all-SEC player. So what Bama will do, will move um, all-SEC guard, Ross Persbarker, from guard to center. Left tackle might be the best in college football in Jonah Williams, all-SEC a year ago. Well, just like the offense, the defense not only has to overcome losing a coordinator, Jeremy Pruitt, uh, was the D.C., now the head coach at Tennessee, but also losing a lot of talent. You might be thinking, 
well, this is the year Bama starts losing games because they lost 12 players to the NFL. Eight of them were defensive players. But keep in mind something. The year before, Bama lost 10 players to the draft. Of those 10, seven of them were defensive players. Okay? So what did Bama do last year? 12 points per game is all they allowed. Tops in college football. 95 yards rushing per game is all they gave up. Tops in college football. And 260 yards of total offense given up by that tight defense. You got it. Tops in college football. They don't rebuild. They reload. And by the way, the year before that, they had seven taken in the draft. The year before that, seven. And in 2014, eight players taken in the draft. Bama's made the playoff every single year since its inception back in 2014. Only team of college football, they can say that, and a pair of national championships during that run. So I'll say it again. They don't rebuild. They reload, and there's your proof. Defensive line, I think the ends are going to be amongst the best you're going to find anywhere. Um, Raekwon Davis, a very tall, big specimen, but he can get into the backfield. Eight and a half sacks, ten tackles for loss. He returns opposite of him, Isaiah Bugs. But they do have to address the inside part. Uh, you do lose um, uh, Deshaun Hand. He's gone. Uh, Deron Payne also gone as well. Linebackers, there are some losses there. Uh, Rashawn Evans as well as Sean Dion Hamilton are gone. But much of the experience is back. And this was an area last year where the Tide suffered some injuries, okay, during the middle of the season and looked a little vulnerable. But once they got healthy, they looked like the Tide defense that we thought we would see. Anthony Jennings had a knee injury uh, during the 2017 season, but he's ready to go. Terrell Lewis also had injury problems during the middle of the season, um, but he was able to come back and be effective. Inside linebackers, uh, Mac Wilson, Dylan Moses, you have them returning. Uh, Moses last year had five and a half tackles for loss. To me, though, the most vulnerable area is going to be the secondary. Even by Alabama standards, this is going to be hard to duplicate. In fact, even though I still think they could be good, it's not going to be great like it was a year ago. You lose Minka Fitzpatrick, Ronnie Harrison, a couple of high draft picks along with Anthony Everett. But you do bring in uh, Deontay Thompson, who did start in the national championship game uh, just this past January. He returns. The corners, though, are going to be fairly raw. Savion Smith, you're getting from LSU. You have on one side and the other one, Patrick Sertan Jr., uh, one of their five-star recruits that they got from the state of Florida. I think he'll play right away. Well, it's not going to take me a lot of time to dissect the Crimson Tide schedule for this season. Why? Because they're going to be favored in every game that they play. Not just that, but they'll be a double-digit favorite in almost every game that they play. The month of November is the one to watch for. A game at LSU, and LSU still has talent, and you never know what might happen at night, which I'm assuming this game will be in prime time in early November. The next week, SEC West contender Mississippi State will come into Tuscaloosa. You might remember a year ago, Jalen Hurts and company had to come from behind to survive the Bulldogs. And, of course, at the end of the year, throw the records out, a meeting with Jared Stenham and the Auburn Tigers. But Auburn hasn't won in Alabama since the Cam Newton Heisman Trophy National Championship winning season for the Tigers back in 2010. To state the obvious, Alabama is my choice to win the SEC West. And we'll all just have to deal with the fact that Bama is the team to beat unless somebody else out there proves otherwise. That's my look at the tide. We'll see you next time.